Okay, this video is going to be a little bit different from all of my other ones. This one doesn't have any script at all. I'm just going to absolutely wing it. Uh, what we are going to do today is I'm going to tier list all of the skills in Skyblock Isles. Uh, all 16 of them, because this one doesn't count. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to take the 16 skills and we're going to tier list them. Uh, in general, what the criteria is going to look like is that it's going to be how well I think the skill is designed. A well-designed skill would be a skill where there's a lot of different things that you can do. The skill isn't one-dimensional, like there's a lot of different ways to level it up. The skill has a lot of uses after you level it up, like it's an important aspect of the game. And while not as important, I would also consider whether or not the skill is entertaining, although that's pretty subjective, because obviously there are some skills that I really don't find fun that other people do. So let's just kick it off with agility. So agility is an interesting skill because it, I, I don't hate the idea of making a skill entirely around parkour. I think that that's a cool concept on paper. The problem is that, for one, there are only two courses in the game right now. Which isn't a big deal, because we know that they have either five or six aisles planned in the future, like in the next couple of years. And if we assume that there's even one parkour on each of those aisles, like there's two on the first aisle, and let's say that there's going to be five aisles. So even if there was five aisles and only one more parkour in each aisle, that's still six parkours. I feel like you have a good place to go from there. I feel like if you had six different parkours you could level up agility with, and then each course giving the tickets and having different rewards, I feel like the skill isn't actually that bad. And also the skill, while it is slow to level up, it's not as slow as a lot of people think it is. A lot of people do parkour and it feels slow because they're not really getting that much per checkpoint and per run. But in actuality, if you're doing giant parkour at a, like, at a reasonable average pace, you can get about 70k XP an hour, which is garbage but it's not as good i feel like people would tell you it's a lot lower than that um the problem with agility the main problem is that because it's based around parkour and because most minecraft servers are western focused what that means is that there is a certain aspect of the player base like there's a certain part of the player base who literally just cannot level up this skill in any meaningful way because their ping just doesn't allow them to I know that there are a lot of players who literally can't do giant parkour because the shulkers at the end just don't work for them. Um, so it's, I don't know, I like where the skill, I like the skill's intention. I think that the skill has a decent future or that it'll be better the longer the game goes on. But as of right now, the skill's really bad because there's only two courses and it has low accessibility because you have to be near the server for your ping to be good enough. So I'm gonna give it a C tier. Okay, alchemy. So, alchemy is in a similar spot to agility, where I feel like the skill has a lot of potential, but that it's not really super fleshed out right now. The general idea is that you mine rune essence and then you turn the essence into runes and you level up alchemy. You can also level up alchemy by using the alchemy table, although that's slow enough that you're not really doing that. It's just kind of a nice bonus whenever you happen to be making the tools and the armor. Your main way of leveling up alchemy is just by going to different altars. The problem with alchemy right now is that there's really only one way to level it up. Or I guess I should say one like viable way to level it up. And that way is to either get an alchemist sash or be strong enough to chill in the alchemist's den. So you can take your rune essence and turn it into corrupted rune essence and then turn that corrupted rune essence into cosmic runes at the cosmic altar. That is really the only way that you can do it, right? Um, and you're also limited by the fact that, co that the Cosmic Altar is only usable during the night time, so you can only even level it up half the time, really. Although I guess you could corrupt during the day and then alchemize during the night if you really wanted to. I do think that the, that the alchemy skill has some potential, just because there are a lot of relics in the game, like the Dream Relic, for example, that does not correspond with an altar. Um, which means that they're planning on adding more altars later, which means that it'll, by association, be easier to level up alchemy. Like, uh, for example, the Cosmic Altar, you can get about 250,000 experience an hour, maybe? 200k, 250k, somewhere around there. But it's only during nighttime. I think it'd be cool if, for the Dream Altar in the future, because Dream Runes are less expensive than Cosmic Runes, I would hope that maybe the Dream Runes are a little bit less XP, but that you can use the altar all the time. And maybe 
the dream also could be something like 175k XP an hour, something where you can do it whenever for a slightly less efficient value, something like that. So I feel like the skill definitely has potential, and also for whatever reason, it's actually kind of fun to level up alchemy. I don't really know what exactly what exactly it is about it, but I do have a bias towards alchemy. Uh, I'm undecided about whether it's low B or high C, but it's definitely one of the two. I'll, I'll put it in B for now, but it might move later. The next skill is attack. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do all of the all of the melee combat skills in a row here. Um, I'm going to do attack first. So of these four, I think it comes to no surprise that attack is the best one. Um, and this is... This is coming from somebody who personally is only leveling defense. Uh, I stopped attack at 55, and I just have defense turned on now. Um, I'm pro I mean, I'm gonna get attacked to 75 at some point. But basically, the general idea is that you level up all of your you level up your attack and your defense to 75, and then you kind of pick one after that, right? Because either you're gonna do attack or you're gonna do defense, and you don't actually need to be past 75 for either one in order to get access to all of the current weapons and armor. But with attack, you have a lot of weapon options, and it's a super universal skill, it's really helpful. Um, and just in general, like, combat is very diverse. Like, I'm not much of a combat person myself, but I can admit that there are lots of different mobs in the game that you can farm, and it's really not that bad. Like, it's not as bad as I would make it out to be on stream when I say that combat is a complete slog. So... So I'll give combat um, a high a high B for now, or not combat. I'll give attack a high B. Uh, could be in, could be a low A. I'll figure it out. Defense is very similar to attack. Defense is how you get most of your armor, which I would say is pretty important. But it is noticeably less important because once you get to late game, you pretty much have two options: that being either netherite or goblin armor. At least for the defense based options. There are other options like pyre full helm or the templar face mask. All that different stuff where you don't where you don't need defense really. So defense is, in terms of defensive armor, you have like the goblin plate body, the goblin tassets, and netherite armor, and that's it. So defense is definitely. I mean, I'm looking at defense right, and I think it's better than alchemy, but I also think that it's nowhere near as good as attack, like in terms of how flushed out it is. Um, so I think I am going to bump attack up to A tier. St strength is definitely the most underwhelming of the three melee skills. It really doesn't do anything. Like, it, okay, things might change when they release um, Mjolnir, because that is going to be a weapon that you need level 75 strength to use. But as as it is right now, battle axes are super underwhelming. You can't put the stinger mods on, so no scorpion stinger, no queen bee stinger, which is kind of a big deal. Like when you have a battle axe, your mods are pretty much like. Asgard Grip, Rigor, and Greater Brute Strength, and then you're capped out. Being stuck with Rigor as one of your only mods, kind of trash. I mean, the, the base stat total is usually slightly higher, but at this point, I just don't think that there's that much use for Strength, uh, especially since the strongest items that you can use in the game, like the Swashbuckler, you only need attack. For all of the, um, the Aegises, you only need defense. Strength just isn't as universal at all. Um, I'm gonna put that above agility though, because once again it belongs to combat. Combat's kind of nice. All right, health. Um, health is pretty easy. Basically, there's nothing you can do to level this up. It doesn't really accomplish that much for you. Uh, health isn't exactly the most useful stat to be leveling it up. Nobody's like hyping up when you level health from 83 to 84. Nobody cares. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give it D tier, right? Like, there's nothing you can do. Although, I don't think it's D tier, I think it's low C, because I feel like D tier should be reserved for things that are just like actively offensive, right? Um, okay, so cooking is, actually I really appreciate cooking, because um, it's one of the skills, one of the only skills, uh, the other ones being um, like smithing and artisan, and then I guess attack a little bit, where every single level feels like you're accomplishing something. Because especially in the early levels, you unlock a recipe pretty much almost every level, and it's really cool. There's a lot of different facets of cooking. You can either go the, the seafood route with fishing, uh, which can be really relaxing in my opinion, honestly. Like just fishing and cooking is something that I can do for hours without getting bored. And then the other way that you can do it is with baking, which have recipes that can be complicated, and so it can be kind of entertaining to go out and look for all those recipes and then make the foods. Um, I like how there's a lot of different categories for cooking, like there's a lot of different sections. So if somebody really wanted to like roleplay being a vegetarian, then 
it specifically labels like which sections are meat sections and which sections are seafood sections and like you could you could technically eat whatever diet you wanted to in this game um i mean there are some problems like for example the the baking caps out at i think an 80 20 80 health 20 stamina i think i think that like poultry is uh before the turkey feast, the best thing you could do is like a plus thirty-five health. It's not, it, it was not good. The the they're not really the, all that balanced, right? Like baking is your best bet for mid game, and then after that, uh, it's all seafood all the way. So it's got some balancing st stuff to go uh, to fix. But it, but I do think that it's going to get better over time as they add in more recipes around those mid game levels for all of the categories to be balanced out. So. I like cooking a lot, I'm gonna give it an A tier. Okay, farming is a skill that that I see as average. Um, when it comes to farming, it's really, it's pretty one-dimensional because farming doesn't exactly contribute to very much. There's a lot of skills in this game that are interwoven. Like for example, if you want to have a good defense set, uh, you have to smith yourself some armor and to level up smithing, you need ores. And in order to get ores, you need to mine. And then in order to make the pickaxe, you have to level up artisan and smithing. It's like, and you also have to woodcut, right? So there's a lot of, basically the point I'm trying to make is that a lot of the skills in this game are related and that's really good because it creates a, like the fluid game where you're always doing something different if you're being self-sufficient. Um, obviously that's different if you, um, if you pick a couple of skills and rock with it and then you're in a clan where you can all contribute with each other. But in general, if you're a solo player, then a lot of the skills are connected. Um, farming is not like that. Farming is a skill where it's kind of like you level it up, and the more you farm, the better you get at farming. There's not really... Um, the, the foods that you can make, mandrake tea isn't super helpful, plus alchemy isn't exactly a crazy, revolutionary <laughs> food that you should be having. Um, once again, it's not fishing, right? And then so a lot of the late game foods, farming isn't really good for that. Um, they actually just gutted farming in the recent Realm Hop update. Mandrakes are much worse now. Uh, you can't even do pumpkins in, in Torrid, so... Okay, where was I? Uh, yeah, as I was saying, doing pumpkins in Torrid is impossible. You have to do pumpkins in Sky. So there's really not a lot of options for how you can level up farming effectively compared to what you could do before, and farming is super self-sufficient, so... Just putting it in broad terms, the skill is kind of a baseline useless except for its self skill I'm gonna but it's not like it's not trash it's not doing anything offensively bad I wouldn't say there's very many negative qualities about it I'm gonna put it in C tier right above agility here okay I really have to keep my my bias out for this one because uh, I love fishing I understand that fishing is not very good I guess I shouldn't say that because fishing is fine, right? Like fishing, I guess I should, I guess what I mean to say is that fishing is not very plentiful. Like you do one thing and that's that you fish. But at the same time, I think that fishing does everything that it can to be as good as possible. There's a lot of different ways you can fish, right? You can net fish, you can hand fish, uh, spear fish, rod fish. So, there's a lot of different ways you can fish, so that kind of keeps it entertaining. I like how some of the fish, you need different types of bait, so it's interesting to match up what you need for each type of fish in order to fish it properly. Like, you need the right tool and you need the right bait, so I think that's a pretty cool dimension. I also mentioned this earlier when I was talking about cooking, but I personally just find fishing to be really relaxing. Like, in my opinion, if you're going to commit to one facet of the game, and only play for that one facet of the game, your best bet is probably to go with fishing and cooking. I feel like it's the most useful for other people, and it's you get you kind of get into a relaxing routine of fishing and cooking. It's really not that bad. Uh, I enjoy fishing a lot. It's my highest skill, personally. Honestly, yeah. Like I, I was going to say something bad about fishing, like how it um how you're just doing the same thing over and over again, but at the same time, that's every skill. I really don't have anything negative to say about fishing. I just have positives. Yeah, even even if I am biased, I think that I think that it's fair that fishing goes in A. Maybe maybe it belongs like in the middle of A, but I'm gonna put it at the front of A because I I just really appreciate fishing. Uh, I think it does everything that I can to be as good as possible. Okay. Um, ooh, fletching is an interesting one. You know, what, I'm gonna do fletching and artisan together actually. 
I think that it makes sense that fledging and artisan be done at the same time because I think that they're pretty similar in the sense where Okay, so yeah, if I'm doing these together, I'm just gonna be really upfront about it and I'm and I'm gonna say that fletching is Fletching is the Daniel and Artisan is the cooler Daniel. I'm sorry for all of the range people out there, but it's just true. Like fletching is just not as good as Artisan. But that being said, I don't think that fletching is bad. I think that there's I think that what's really cool about fletching and artisan is that there is a large heap of of content for both. Like there's a lot of things that Fletching and Artisan contribute towards. Artisan more so than Fletching. Um, Fletching specifically, I do think that it kind of drags a little bit. I would say that some of its problems are, for example, if you are woodcutting and you want to use a knife, then you're probably doing it to make handles and leveling Artisan as opposed to Fletching. A lot of the methods that you use to level up Fletching are super tedious. Like the best ways to do it are making bolts or arrows and then also like bamboo shoots right like there's really not it's really not that fun uh fletching is also really specific it's not super useful to you unless you are either rod fishing or doing range so it doesn't actually cover that many categories so i really don't think that fletching is that great of a skill but i do i do like the intent behind it i am going to i'm looking at the skills and i do think i'm going to put it in low b i think that that is a deserving spot, although I could also see an argument for high C. <laughs> Artisan, okay, I, 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 um, this one was the third skill on the list, and then I ended up bumping it down because I didn't want to talk about it right away. Uh, you know, spoilers, Artisan is my S tier skill. I think Artisan is by far the best skill in the game for a lot of reasons. I think that Artisan is super useful for a lot of skills. Like, for example, <laughs> pretty much in order to do anything, like in order to fish, farm, mine, woodcut, fight, you need handles, um, handles that you can only get from Artisan. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to level up Artisan, a lot of different viable ways to level up Artisan, I guess I should make that clear. Like, you can tan hides. Um, there is actually a certain part from like maybe levels 30 to 40 where tanning hides is the best thing that you can do, uh, tanning poor hides, but you don't have to do it because you can also make handles from woodcutting or you can mine gold and then turn the gold into golden lures and then do that. Or you can also cast using gemstones. Or you can just get gemstones in general. Like, there's a lot of different ways to level up Artisan. And then once you've leveled up Artisan, you accomplish a lot by doing it. I feel like Artisan has a lot of importance in the game. Just to name a few, tanning hides is super important for making range armor. It's super important for chiseling the gemstones, which is super important for magic. It makes the handles, which gives you the base weapons for melee. So it's important for all of the combat skills. It's important for all of the side skills. And that could be a negative, right? Because if every single skill kind of sections into Artisan, then it really heavily relies on Artisan being good. Because if Artisan is the same thing over and over and over again, and it's really boring, then you end up in this kind of you end up in, with a game where you're forced to do something that nobody wants to do. But like I said, there are so many ways to level up Artisan that it actually makes it fine. Like, it's fine that everything kind of has to go through Artisan in order to function properly, because they worked really hard to make Artisan have a lot of different viable methods to level it up. So I personally really like Artisan as a skill. Easy S tier. It's far and away the best skill in the game. Okay, magic. Um... Magic is a combat skill, and it's pretty simple for me to rank magic. Magic is going to go right next to attack. Whether it's above or below, it doesn't really matter to me. Me, personally, I would put it below just because I prefer melee, but I could also see an argument to put magic above. Basically, the general idea is that of the two range skills, magic is the better of the two. There are more options in combat. It's stronger. There's more versatility. And magic has extra uses, like for example, you can teleport, or you can be the only person in the entire world to use Midas Touch, or you can be the only person in the world ever to use Telekinesis. There are lots of useless spells, basically, but there are also a lot of useful spells. And I think that magic is kind of a core skill that everybody needs to level up, at least to level 30, so you get access to all the teleport spells. And magic is the most efficient way to kill things quickly while also having enough variety that it is just as entertaining as attack. So magic is an A tier, I don't really have to say much about it. I think that 
everybody kind of understands that magic's pretty good. Uh, a skill that is not good is range. Um, range has a lot of problems, but I guess that the main thing is just that why would you ever pick range when you could be doing magic? The only flaw of magic in my eyes is that the entry cost in order to use it for combat is really hard when you're early game, but honestly it gets pretty easy once you're mid game and it's not really a big concern. Range has the same problem as magic in that it's hard to do early because the entry cost is pretty high for an early game player, but it is a big deal for range because at the point where you could devote your time into range, there's no point to do it because magic is just better. Like they even nerfed Elder Gale recently, which was probably the best thing that range had going for it. Some of the weapons in range are completely useless. Like I don't think that there's a single person who would say that crossbows are a good weapon. Their damage numbers are just way too low uh, for how slow they fire. Even if you're using the highest DPS range stuff in the game, the damage numbers are just not very good. The balloon bazooka, for example, is one of the weapons that a lot of mid-late game range players would use, but that traps you into playing balloon pop over and over again, so that way you can get the ammo, and balloon pop is not exactly the most entertaining thing to be doing. I also hate the fact that the most efficient way to level up range to like level 30 is to force yourself to do balloon pop over and over again, because why would you want to do that? You level up balloon pop all the way to 30, and then you get to 30, and you're, and you're like, alright, time to fight with range, and then you realize that it sucks. So I think that range has a lot of problems. I think it needs a lot more types of weapons, or at the very least the weapons that it has need to be more universally better. Um, in, all, in, in all honesty, it just needs a buff. I hate to say it, but I'm giving range a D tier. Like, it's just... In comparison to everything, like, okay, on its own, as its own entity, it's really not that bad, it's probably C, but just in comparison to all of the other combat skills, I can't see any world where range could be touching any other combat skills. And we have two combat skills in C, neither of which is doing anything wrong, and range has so many problems that it just has to be in D. Mining is a really boring skill to talk about, but if I had to say anything, I would just say that it is consistently useful. I don't really think that anybody has too many problems with mining. I would say that the biggest problem with mining is how slow it is to level it up. The progression is really, really bad. I think that it, ca it capped out at like 150k an hour before the update, and with the update, it can't be any higher than 100k an hour. It is horrendously bad. Um, but other than how slow the skills to level up, like mining is really important. Uh, I know that there are a lot of players who enjoy mining, so I can't really say that it's super crazy dull. I would just I would just say that mining is low B tier. Probably behind fletching. Yeah, I'll put it behind fletching. I, I wanna put it in C, but I think that B tier uh, B tier makes sense. And then the last skill, Smithing. Smithing has a lot of perks to it because it is one of the skills where every single level matters which inherently makes it a nice skill because every level feels like it means something as opposed to fletching where it's like there's this there's a giant gap between 50 and 60 where you get like one thing unlocked between there but for smithing pretty much every single level matters and i think that's a really nice balance however there's a little bit of a problem with smithing and that's that it's directly tied to mining like you cannot smith without mining or well hold on let me think is there a way that you can level up smithing without mining no i think you have to mine um and that kind of sucks. Like I like I like how smithing is. I don't think that smithing does anything wrong. I think that it makes perfect sense that it is the way that it is. It's just kind of uh, it's just kind of sad, a little bit sad because it is tied behind a skill. So there's really only one way to level it up, and that is to mine whatever you want to mine, and then you smith it. So I can't put smithing A tier because of that. Even though it has A tier qualities, like I said, I I personally value. A feeling of accomplishment with every level really high, but smithing just doesn't do anything alone to warrant it being any higher than like B. Also not to mention that a lot of players completely skip it out entirely, which means that it must be pretty boring to the average player. So it's gonna be B tier. I don't think it's as bad as mining, because at least with mining, um, or at least with smithing, like I said, there's a lot of options. So I would say that it's like an upgraded version of Fletching. 
Let me just take a look at this list to, to make sure that there's nothing that I want to change real quick. I actually think that because of the utility spells, I think that I think I can put magic ahead of attack just entirely. I think that agility has enough problems that if we're using health as a baseline for doing literally nothing, that agility is worse than health, so I can put it there. And I think that's a list, actually. I think that is... I think that's gonna do it. That is every skill, in my opinion, ranked by how good the design is currently. Um, I really suck ass at these YouTube outros, so I'm just not gonna do one.